you. Thank you, Antonio, for the invitation. Uh, in this talk, I will report some uh, work we have done in uh, collaboration with uh, Yusuf Amirat about some uh, mathematical, mo mathematical modeling of EDICAR problems. And uh, I will show through some uh, uh, various models how to obtain uh, models that deal with uh, coils, wires, things like this in uh, electrotechnics. main motivation is some engineering uh, applications, uh, what we call generally eddy currents or uh, current, uh, electric currents that are generated for with low frequencies that are used for some purposes like heating, melting, things like that. It means processes in which uh, we neglect uh, wave, uh, electromagnetic wave propagation. So, uh, typically, uh, you have, this is, uh, the image here is not so good, but typically you have uh, an inductor, which is a conductor, which is a, a body in the space, which is thin, okay? We will characterize this <coughs> property, and this one carries electric current, and you have uh, the body in which current is induced, which is uh, thick. Okay. Uh, here you have something like, well, assume this is filled. Actually, you have here this uh, coil that brings the current from generator to the induced piecework. So, uh, if you solve this problem directly. You have, you will have some uh, difficulties as usual when you have some uh, discrepancy in scales uh, and these difficulties uh, will appear also in numerical simulations because in the thin regions you will need a very fine mesh if you use uh, some finite element method and uh, this also can imply some ill conditioning and it is more expensive since you have you need more uh, very fine meshes. So a remedy to this is of course to use, to make use of some scientific analysis to obtain such models. So let me now uh, go into the models. I will just briefly uh, show how to uh, obtain the models. You have typically omega here is the union of conductors I have designed. And omega prime, of course, in all these problems, we will deal to magnetic currents, uh, magnetic fields in the whole space. So omega prime is the complementary of the closure of omega. And you have this set of equations, which is called eddy current equations, because here we have neglected the wave propagation term, which is I omega epsilon E. E is the electric current, H is the uh, magnetic, uh, excuse me, E is the electric field, uh, J is the current density, H is the magnetic field. So uh, I said we have neglected this term here, that implies this equation in the whole space. We have here what's called the Faraday equation, where omega is the uh, angular frequency and mu is the magnetic permeability. We assume all these constant for simplicity. And uh, here, this is the ohm law, sigma is the electric conductivity of the medium. So of course you have the ohm law in the conductor and in the free space we have the, a new zero current field. So, so far uh, in the 3D case, uh, as it's written, this problem for us is not completely solved. But we have already created some special uh, features of the problem, uh, say the uh, calculation of the inductance. I will, uh, I will define this later. Let me consider to idealize uh, the situation 
uh, this is our uh, inductor, so it's a torus. Okay? Omega is the torus. And uh, let me call this omega epsilon, indexed by epsilon, where epsilon is the inner radius of the, the torus. And of course, called omega prime epsilon is complementary. And the uh, sigma here, we will need to deal with a cut in the space in R3. It means here a, uh, a surface that you uh, subtract from the space in order to make this domain simply connected. Okay. We will see why this is useful. Uh, now, if you see the equations, we have that the curve of the magnetic field is zero in outer space, which is mean that is a gradient. Since the space, outer space, is not simply connected, you must, it's a gradient plus it's a gradient of some uh, uh, functions that make a discontinuity across this cut. Okay? So this is a classical uh, result in vector analysis is that when you have a curve equals zero in a non-disconnected, in simply non-simply disconnected, uh, simply connected domain, you you can decompose it like this, where phi epsilon is any uh, harmonic field, and p epsilon uh, satisfies this set of equations. So it's uh, harmonic in the space where you have. Uh, omitted the, the cut and it makes of course as I said uh, a jump of one this make, means that uh, well, this alpha is here to uh, tune the jump and dpdn the normal derivative makes a jump of zero you have a no Neumann condition on the boundary of the conductor and you have some appropriate behavior at the infinity so the question is, uh, if you calculate uh, the inductance, the self-inductance of uh, this torus is defined by this guy, which is some, well, let's say, some energy associated to this potential P. So this is mu times this. Uh, this, this equality is simply a consequence of these equations by the Green formula. And now the question is, uh, uh, what is the limit of L epsilon when epsilon tends to zero? It means what is the inductance of a very thin conductor? And the answer is it's infinity. I can't, I don't have time to explain you why, but I will give you how this can be uh, handled. Well, it doesn't, so it goes to infinity, but there's still interest in the problem is that to show how it goes to infinity, it means if you have some idea of the singularity and what is the remaining term when epsilon goes to zero. And the answer is a result that we have obtained is that L epsilon behaves like a log of epsilon plus some constant term that is, well, it takes a page to uh, detail it, that can be exp uh, calculated explicitly. I mean that you don't have to solve a problem with some strange uh, behavior when epsilon, well, it goes to zero and epsilon goes to zero. Uh, this result was already, if you see the classical book on uh, electromagnetics of Landau and Lifshitz, you will see the same, uh, this first term, it, it doesn't give the remaining terms. So he say, they say that for a very thin conductor, you will have uh, such a thing. Okay? The advantage of what we said is that we have proved, the result is proven, and even more, uh, we have extra terms in the expansion. And uh, another remark is that if you consider, if you want to replace this model by some circuit, algebraic circuit uh, equation, you will write it in this well-known formula, Kirchhoff circuit equation, in which L is the inductance and R is the resistance. I is the total current. So this means that if you want to obtain from the Eddy current equation 
uh, some uh, uh, rigorous limit problem, then it easily can see, because V is given, that uh, normally since L behaves like a log epsilon, then I must behave like this. Okay? So this explains what, why it is, can explain why it is so difficult to obtain the Euclid 3D model. Instead, I will now present rapidly two uh, 2D models. One that uh, I have tweeted uh, some years ago is uh, if you consider that your conductors are, that you have here some projection of the plane of your conductors. Okay, so you have cylindrical conductors. The inductor is this one, and this is the thick conductor. Uh, to obtain the 2D model, so you see here that the magnetic field is assumed to be perpendicular to this board, white board, and uh, consequently J, the current, is looks like this. So if you start from this, you can prove that H, magnetic field, has only one non-zero component, and this, that I call U epsilon, is solution of this problem. It means in particular that the magnetic field is zero outside this uh, setup. So U epsilon is a sol solution of this elliptic equation with uh, complex coefficients and uh, it's zero on the boundary here and it's constant in here in the inner free space. So to handle the problem, you can give some variation of formulation. Omega epsilon is the union of the two conductors plus the inner free space. And you will have this kind of variation of formulation. And uh, given here, F is the current voltage. Uh, to obtain something that looks like a reasonable model, model you must assume that uh, the inverse of the conductivity, what's called the, the resistivity, is something small when the thickness goes to zero. So we assume it's some order of epsilon. And when you do this, you can prove that you have in a standard H1 space a strong convergence of U epsilon to U in the set, in the thick conductor, where U is the solution of this problem. So you see that we have something that is in H1 and constant on the boundary. Okay, and this is the limit problem where here we have the area, the measure of the inner free space and L is the length of the curves that generate the conductor. Uh, now, if you assume that you don't have a thick conductor, you have only your thin wire, then uh, if phi stands for the constant value of u on the boundary, then you have this algebraic equation, which is, it looks like the, the circuit equation I've just given before. So you can identify that the, in this case, the induct uh, inductance is mu times the area of the free sp inner free space and the resistance is something like this after some reinterpretation because of course this doesn't mean sense because we have already gone with epsilon to zero. So we can give you with this formalism you will have uh, your circuit equation. Okay, so this formula or exactly the same formula that you can find in textbooks in the secondary schools. Now, uh, a most uh, recent result is uh, this one. You have another 2D situation which is more complicated. You assume that the conductors are just like before, but you see the, the, tra uh, the projection of the plane is this conductor, but the inductor is, uh, say, some, uh, some uh, torus that makes that surrounds this guy. So you can imagine that you have something to be for the model, you have some cylinder that comes from the 
it goes to the infinity in one sense and comes from the infinity in another sense. Okay, so this is some idealization, 2D idealization of the 3D model. Okay, we will see how in the model this can be handled. So in this situation, what changes mathematically is that the current is the reverse. It means that the current J is perpendicular to the, the black board, which was not the, which was this was the case for the magnetic field in the previous example. And uh, the magnetic field is some uh, 2D vector uh, field in the plane. Uh, of course, uh, taking the limit to the thickness, in the thickness here, is to say that this one, this inductor, is all two pieces of the same inductor in the 3D, will reduce to a point. Okay, this is the difference. You see, in the other two decays, we had some uh, annulus. When epsilon tends to zero, uh, goes to tends to some uh, curve, closed curve. Here, we have two domains, and when epsilon goes to zero, they tend to a point. Each goes to a point. So let me uh, denote by omega zero here is the thick domain. Omega one epsilon and two epsilon are the inductors, and omega epsilon is the union of these three domains. Uh, if you assume in the eddy current equation that the current is of this form, you can prove that H, magnetic field, has only two components, and they satisfy the set of equations, where you see here we are in 2D, uh, this is the scalar curl, you know that in 2D you have, you distinct, can distinguish a scalar curl out of a vector field and a vector curl of a scalar field. So you have this set of equations uh, with J and H. And now I want to reduce all these to one equation by eliminating these. So this is made by the means of the potential U. Since I have written here that divergence of mu H equals zero, it means that mu H is a curl of the scalar field U, potential U. And uh, making use of the previous equations, we can write curl, scalar curl or vector curl of u, which is nothing else that minus Laplace of u, is mu j in the conductor. And uh, if you take the curl of the Faraday equation, it is zero. And since we are in 2D, the curl is only nothing else but the gradients rotated with 2 pi. So it means that I omega sigma u plus j, I have multiplied here by sigma, is sigma times a constant. Of course, it's zero. It means the gradient is zero. It means that this, this field is constant in each subdomain. The remaining problem is to say what are these constants. To be, uh, well, let me first give the obtained set of equations. So these are, you obtain some kind of elliptic, just like before, elliptic equation with uh, complex coefficients in any, in, in, uh, in each uh, conductor, and harmonic field in outer space, okay? Here it's an unbounded domain, of course. This is the difference, main difference. You don't have here, uh, the magnetic field doesn't, is not zero outside. You have also continuity of U and DUDN across the boundaries of the conductors, and you have some appropriate behavior at the infinity. Uh, the question is what are these CK? How do you determine them? The CK themselves have no physical meaning. We have to relate them to the electric current. So, the main assumption that enables giving these values is to say how I said before, just before, that we assume that the current that goes from one inductor comes from the other for some uh, current conservat conservativity reasons. So it means that the integral of the current in the one equals minus in the other. Okay? And this value is a given value 
This is the current that comes, that is brought to the inductor from the generator. Okay? And consequently, in the induced domain, the total current is zero. So, to simplify now the settings, I will denote by omega mu sigma, which is, uh, this product is a positive real number, I will denote it by theta. Uh, I will denote this will be needed in any, in each uh, subdomain, a tilde here means the mean value of the field in this domain and the uh, chi here is the characteristic function one in the domain and zero outside of course if k equals zero is the fixed domain and we need no epsilon here so after some simple calculations we obtain this equation which is look here we have Laplace and we have characteristic functions of the conductors u minus its mean value and here you have mu times i times here we have the characteristic function divided by the measures of the domains in R2 now it is a simple look at the equations because we have u minus mean value it, you can see that the solution here is not unique it is up to one constant so we fix the constant by assuming that the mean value in uh, the fixed domain is zero simple of course and we have uh, we have so now our purpose is to take the limit of this uh, set of equations when epsilon tends to zero So, as I said, we can prove that this set of equations uh, admits a unique solution in a populated space. I will give just now. Uh, to have a, a appropriate setting, setting uh, we know, use the spaces used by Nedelec for electromagnetic problems. It means some uh, H1 weighted spaces, so uh, functions that are when multiplied by this weight that gives the appropriate behavior on L2 and the gradient is also on L2 and because of the condition that I have added I will, I will take uh, the mean value equals to zero so uh, well we can prove some equivalence of norm it means that the gradient norm for the gradient is a norm on this space and that's, uh, that's not difficult and we have this uh, variational formulations. Okay, so here we have mean values of the test functions. Okay, this is the right hand side. I is a given value. Now, uh, if I'm interested in limit problem, of course I have to describe precisely uh, what is the domain, how the domain, the small domains depend on uh, epsilon. So we assume they are given by some center point z omega k epsilon is some zk plus epsilon omega k hat for k equal one or two for small epsilon zk are given real numbers and omega k are given regular domains. Now, before analyzing, we can already suggest a limit problem uh, the limit problem you can suggest is uh, to obtain is that when epsilon goes to zero the u epsilon minus its mean value will goes to zero means that in domain uh, each function will tend to its mean value except of course here in the fixed domain and here you will have because we have uh, the mean values of the test function divided by the area of the domain, you will have Dirac masses concentrated on these points Z1 and Z2 with the same behavior. So this is the expected limit problem. And of course, uh, the question is how to prove this, if this is true. Uh, 
first remark is that if this is a limit problem, we can, of, of course we can't expect a limit in H1, okay? Because this is not well posed in H1. Uh, and the second is that we can prove already that this problem has at most one solution, is that uniqueness is already obtained. Of course, existence will be a result of the limit process. But uniqueness is, can be useful to, of course, in order that all subsequences uh, uh, will have convergence for subsequences, and this mean, will mean that the whole sequence that will consider u epsilon tends to the limit So uh, I will not, not detail the, of course, the, um, the the proof. I just mentioned two results. First is that for this kind of problems that are adapted here for the <coughs> unbounded domain, is that when you use uh, classical duality techniques of Lyon, St Stampakia, and others, uh, we can choose the duality. It means that we choose here. If we choose a, a regular test function, we obtain this, uh, this uh, formulation for all functions which are H2 loc locally, okay? uh, intersected with V, of course. So this means that we have this variational formulation, this, right, this equation, and the duality means that this can be written just like, well, here we need to add uh, uh, weight rho, rho square, uh, u epsilon times psi here, with right, uh, same right hand side, where psi, where, excuse me, phi epsilon is solution of this problem. Okay, we have just added this here, and we have rho epsilon, uh, rho uh, psi. Okay? So, uh, we can have the uh, first task is to show that the phi epsilon, because now you see that in, this, in the dual problem uh, the right hand side doesn't depend anymore on epsilon, but the test function phi epsilon, it is the test function that depends on it. So we can prove that the phi epsilon tends to uh, function phi. Uh, this is the expected limit problem against the same technique. We first derive uh, a candidate for the limit problem, which is this one. And we prove some estimate and then uh, show that the phi epsilon converges to phi. And now we can take the limit in the equation to obtain this. So we can even can show this uh, convergence result. It means that we have a convergence in L2 uh, strong, strongly with this rate. So it's epsilon uh, to the power, almost to the power one half. Okay. And this limitation comes from the fact that because we use some embedding of H2 functions into uh, Hölder functions, spaces. So we by using some uh, extra uh, estimates, we can now go to co uh, prove more uh, further results in convergence. I will not give the technique here. We simply we use uh, normalized solution techniques to obtain this final result. Is that uh, we don't. Uh, the, the sequence u epsilon actually converges weakly in all w1p, where p is, uh, of course, p is not, cannot be equal to 2, but, well, it's almost 2 on all compact subsets, because we are in the whole space. Okay. Let me end by a remark. It's that when you consider, just like for the 2D case, if you consider that I have one thick domain, okay, uh, excuse me, but you have only the inductor, no thick domain, okay, you have just the inductor, so it means that omega zero is empty, then, of course, with the same technique, we can prove this result, is that the limit 
potential satisfies this equation. With you know, you see have a Laplace with a right hand side, which is uh, subtraction of two delta functions. So this problem you can give its solution still by, of course, by the green function, which this one. So this well already this confirms that the solution goes to zero when x goes to infinity. Okay, and this gives you also the idea of how to solve the problem when you have the thick domain actually. So in general case, you consider that the solution is a superposition of the solution I've just given now, u0, plus w, we can prove this, where w is solution of this problem. So you see that the singularity here was solved explicitly, and you have just to solve a regular elliptic problem, of course, in the whole space, but it's uh, easier to solve than the original one. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, domanda. That, excuse me. The resistance R can depend on epsilon as well. It, it depends actually, of course. So it, it, when you make this uh, estimate, you should include also this. I mean. No, but look, this, I didn't, we didn't obtain this result. Yeah. This is, I said, this is the circuit equation, OK? Yes, yes. This is the hope. Uh, so it is sure that resistance will depend on epsilon, OK? So we don't know how, how. All what I said is that since here the L depends on the epsilon as a log function, mm -hmm. you have on the count, it implies that it behaves like this in order to obtain this equation, that the equ this equation makes sense, that's all. But I don't know how the resistance behaves with uh, the epsilon. Yes, sir, I mean. yes, I see what you mean. Yes, my feeling is that the dependence of R over epsilon could uh, overwhelm the dependence on R, on L. But th th this is something that uh, I could work out. It's see. possible, I don't know. I can't but tell you. you investigate this? It's okay, yes. Okay. I didn't, uh, no, we didn't, uh, no, not yet. Uh, another, uh, another small question. Uh, this is, as far as I understand, this is what uh, we call uh, the external inductance, which means uh, uh, the inductance that takes into account the magnetic field which is outside the, uh, the wire. Uh, no, no, no. It co it's all magnetic field. Also inside the, yes. the, the conductor. Because it's, uh, I said self-inductance, it means precisely, the well, the uh, magnetic field inside and outside are dependent, of course. But uh, actually this, the L, you see, it's external here, but you see that uh, just by using the equation, you can report it to the boundary. So it's, uh, it's, it's an index, I mean, it's, well. Uh, omega uh, this is prime the, the is, uh, remind me, what is that? Sigma is the surface uh, which makes the, the, the you main uh, simply connected. Exactly. Right. And uh, omega uh, prime is... Is the exterior domain. Only the exterior domain. So you're considering only the exterior Yes, domain. but uh, P, the P function, the potential, is only defined outside in the exterior domain. It is, uh, you know, it, the inductance is given... I, oh yes, I understand what you mean. But, uh, yes, because it's a result of curl h equals zero in the exterior. That's right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. But yes. I don't know. Uh, I, mean, I think it's they are related. It's the, it's a, only one magnetic field. 
with some uh, interface condition and boundary, but it's the same magnetic field. Yes, in fact, yes, this ma the magnetic field inside the wire yes. uh, has, a ba has an interface condition on the boundary of the yes. wire, and this then goes to zero, yes. uh, up to the center of the wire. Yes. And this magnetic field gives rise to what we call in uh, electromagnetics uh, the internal inductance. Of okay, the understand. Yes, I don't know. Okay, so, so this is not considered in this uh, computation. This is not? This is not considered in your computation? No, no. Altre domande? Oh, excuse me. Uh, one more question. Very yes? Short question. Regarding the dependence of R from epsilon, in this case, since you are considering epsilon very small, you yes. take the static resistance. The yes. Static, the, the resistance goes to infinite as uh, one over epsilon squared. Uh huh. Um, and then my second question: uh, Can we go back to page six? To which one? Page. Page six. Page six. Okay. I'm wondering uh, if uh, we, if the, the, the first equation, the equation that gives L as a function of epsilon, yes. can be generalized also to arbitrary shapes. To? Arbitrary shapes. Not only ah. to the other shapes or the uh, uh, It's to only, we believe it's only technical. It's only technical because uh, uh, actually, the so it's, not, it's, not as, uh, it's not necessarily a circle. Okay. All the limitation is that mm -hmm. the section is constant. Okay. Okay. This is not a standard. Exactly, because uh, if the section is constant, the calculations are more complex, and we only change something here. Okay, the coefficient, uh, something that depends on the shape, but it will not change the behavior when epsilon goes to zero. Okay. So this formula, uh, at least in principle, may be valid also when you have an arbitrary shape. Yes. As long as it is section is constant? Not only. I, I'm, I claim it's not only when the, sh the, cons the section is constant. Uh, I mean, yes, maybe you will have here some uh, shape factor, okay. okay? But log epsilon is uh, definitely the, the right term. Okay. <laughs> e qui anche nell'ambito del progetto Sorrates Erasmus e quindi forse vuole rappresentare un po' l'Università di Monferrat se voi avete degli studenti che vogliono andare a Monferrat per qualche mese, per un semestre Ok, just some words I am a, a professor of applied mathematics in an engineering school in, in Clermont-Ferrand. Uh, this engineering school be, uh, is a part of uh, an engineering, uh, a network of engineering schools. It's called Polytech. And uh, in this engineering school, we have uh, five departments of teaching that give uh, a degree in engineering, which are uh, civil engineering, biological engineering, physical engineering, electrical engineering, and mathematical engineering. Okay, I, I am in mathematical engineering department. Uh, I have talked to some students, of your students, to say that uh, there are opportunities in the Erasmus programs to, uh, as you know, to spend uh, at least one semester in other schools, so why not in ours? And of course, uh, it's, it's an exchange program. It means that uh, we can en encourage our uh, students in function of uh, departments you have here to come to spend uh, one semester or more here, okay, in Casino. So uh, I have left, uh, I will left and even uh, send some uh, documentation if you want more further information about uh, the, the school and uh, also uh, that we can welcome uh, internships in research okay if you have uh, need for for this and, uh, so if you have some I don't know how to present this but you have some questions on it I'm 
ready to answer. Mi sono stato segnalato che il progetto sopra Erasmus con Clermont però è già attivo. Se qualcuno vuole andare, qualche studente. Ringraziamo il professor Tuisani.